In this video, we solve problem 6.4.9 from Essentials of Statistics, sixth edition by Mario Triola. The problem statement says an elevator has a placard stating that the maximum capacity is 2,490 pounds or 15 passengers. So let's say 15 adult male passengers um, can have, or so that means, excuse me, that a 15 adult male passengers can have a mean weight of up to that 2490 divided by 15 or 166 pounds each. If the elevator is loaded with 15 male passengers, the question says find the probability that it is overloaded because they have a mean weight that's greater than 166 pounds. Then we're told to assume that the weights of males are normally distributed with a mean of 172 pounds and a standard deviation of 31 pounds. The question says, does this elevator appear to be safe? First, we want the probability that the elevator is overloaded. Now, when we're talking about the weights of males, we were told, we were given that the weights of males are normally distributed and the mean is 172 pounds and the standard deviation of those weights is 31 pounds. Now we're not actually talking about the weights of males here. We're talking about the mean weight of a sample of males. So if we're looking at um, sample means, consisting of means that are um, weights, the mean weight of males in a particular sample, it turns out that those sample means um, have a mean that is equal to the population mean. And that's because sample means are an unbiased estimator as we discussed in lesson 6.3. So this um, mean of 172 pounds, which um, describes the weights of males is also the mean of the sample means um, so that's 172 pounds as well. Now, if we look at sample means, um, since these guys were normally distributed, these will be normally distributed for any size population um, as well. And this will be the mean and the standard deviation of the sample means turns out to not equal the original standard deviation, but it equals the original standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So in our case, that's 31 pounds divided by the square root of the sample size, which in this problem was 15 male uh, passengers. So we had um, N equals 15. So now when they ask us, let's see, where is it? Find the probability um, that the elevator is overloaded because they have a mean weight greater than 166 pounds. We don't wanna look at the standard or the um, normal probability distribution for the weights of males, we want to look at the normal probability distribution for the sample means. So I'll still sketch it this way. But instead of having the mean here, we have the mean of the sample means there. And the mean of the sample means happens to be the same as the population mean, which is 172 pounds. And we want the probability that the mean weight is greater than 166. So that's down here. It's below that mean of the sample means of 172 pounds. And it's a probability that the weight is greater than that. So we actually want this area to the right of that mean weight of 166 pounds. So the question is, what is that area? Well, there are a couple of different ways that we can find that area. We can use our table A2, we can also use Excel, and there's lots of other technology out there that will allow you to find that area to the right. Um, and I'll just write down what we're trying to do. We want the probability that the um, mean weight for that sample is greater than 166 pounds. Now, if I'm using table A2 or I'm using Excel, 
I don't want the probability that the mean weight is greater than 166 pounds, um, or I do want that, but I won't be able to find that directly because Excel and table A2, they always give me the area to the left, not the area to the right. So if I want the area to the left, I have to subtract the area, or if I want the area to the right, excuse me, I have to subtract the area to the left from one. Now we can do this two ways. I can find this um, probability that our sample mean is less than 166 using Excel, that's gonna be slightly more accurate, or I can find, or I can convert this to a corresponding um, z-score and use table A2. So I'm gonna do this both ways. So method number one, I'm going to use Excel, and in method number two, I'm going to use table A2. But either way, we're computing the same thing. We're just gonna get a better approximation over here. Okay, so first let's use table A2, and then we'll use Excel. So if I want the probability that um, my sample mean is less than 170 or 166, I need to find the probability that the z-score, the corresponding z-score is less than um, some value. So I need to find that z-score. The way we find the z-score is, is we take that sample mean and we subtract the mean of the sample means and we divide by the standard deviation of the sample means so I've got that 166 here, and I'm subtracting the mean of the sample means, which happens to be the same as the population mean of 172. And we're dividing by the standard deviation of the sample means, which is the standard deviation of the population that that data came from divided by the square root of the sample size. So we'll have 31 over the square root of 15 down here. We're subtracting these guys, and then we're dividing by this quotient. So I will do that on my calculator. We've got 166 minus 172. And then we're dividing by this whole thing. So this is how I would enter it. I would enter open parentheses, 31 divided by square root of 15. Get out of that uh, radical. And then you've got that right there. Hit equals or enter. That's giving you the exact answer for the z-score. But we want to round to two decimal places. So that's about negative 0.75. So our z-score um, tells us that this mean of 166 pounds um, for those 16 men, uh, that is um, equivalent to a z-score of negative 0.75 or um, that x value or that mean value of that sample mean value is 0.75 standard deviations below the mean. So after you calculate your z-score using that formula, as we just did, then you can just use table A2 to find this probability and subtract it from one in order to get this probability up here. So I will go to table A2 now. Now the z-score that we're talking about is a negative 0.75. So I go to the negative uh, 0 0.7 line right here, and that's 0 0.70. 0 0.71, 0 0.72, 0 0.73, 0 0.74, and 0 0.75 is, gives us an area to the left, that's what's in the body of the table, remember, of 0.2266. So this is 1 minus 0.2266. Now all of these are approximations. This is equal to this, but this is approximately equal to that because that is a rounded z-score. And then this area is actually rounded as well. So that's an approximation as well. But then we can subtract and round to four decimal places. And we get 0.7734. So that's one way to do it. It's slightly less accurate, but this is probably the method you'll be using on your exams. So you wanna get really comfortable with this method. Now the alternate method is to use um, this function in Excel. 
It's N-O-R-M dot D-I-S-T. And then they're gonna ask you to um, enter some, some parameters for your normal distribution. So I will share my screen with you and then we'll use Excel to do this. So I've got a workbook here. I'm gonna zoom in quite a bit so we can see what's going on. And I'll just type equals N-O-R-M dot D-I-S-T for normal distribution, open parentheses. And you can see they sort of tell you what you're supposed to enter. You're supposed to enter the X value that you're interested in, which is 166. And then we want the mean of the normal distribution we're talking about and now remember, this is not the normal distribution of the weights of males. This is the normal distribution of the sample means of the weights of males. So the mean of this normal distribution happens to be the same as the original normal or original mean, which is 172 pounds. But the standard deviation is actually not um, 31 pounds, the standard deviation of the weights of males. It's this 31 divided by the square root of 15. I don't think that we can just enter 31 divided by the square root of 15 here. We actually need to calculate it so that we can put it in. Um, so that is approximately 8.00416555. Uh, uh, and I'm just putting all those digits um, because I want to be as accurate as possible. And whenever we, it asks you for cumulative or not, you want to say true because we want that area to the left of that particular X value or particular mean value because we're thinking of the means now as our variable in this normal distribution. So once you do that, just hit enter and you get um, an area of approximately 2 point, or 0.2267. Now notice that when we use table A2, the area to the left of that particular z-score was 0.2266. So we're gonna get a very similar answer. It's not exactly the same, but it's very close. So we have a probability that that sample mean is greater than 166 pounds of one minus this answer, which is 0.7733. So let's go back to our homework assignment. And the question says, what is the probability that the elevator is overloaded? And you can use this answer or this answer. Um, My lab statistics should accept either answer. Check answer. All right, they like that. And then the question says, does the um, elevator appear to be safe? So in other words, you know, do you wanna be on that elevator? <laughs> if the probability that the elevator is going to be overloaded is 0.7733. That means you have a 77.33% chance that that elevator would be overloaded um, if there were 15 um, male passengers that had normally distributed weights with the mean and standard deviation that we were given. Um, so uh, no, this elevator does not appear to be safe. That 77% chance that it's not going to work, that the elevator is gonna be overloaded, that's, that's a huge chance. Um, so we'll say, um, no, it's not a, it doesn't appear to be safe. Um, there is a good chance that 15 randomly selected people will exceed the capacity, as long as randomly selected men. Okay, so that's how we answer that question.